Johnny, Johnny. Making dirty bomb. Clear missile warhead. What exactly is plutonium? No, it's not some rock found on Pluto, and no Dr. Brown, it isn't for making time machines. If you've heard of plutonium before, then you probably already know its main use is for making atomic weapons. But in order to fully understand it, let's take a closer look. Plutonium is a radioactive metal which is part of the actinide group. That means it is located in period 7 of the periodic table of elements. Plutonium got its chemical symbol sort of as a joke. Glenn Seberg was on the team that made plutonium and he was the one that gave it the chemical symbol of PU because he thought it was super funny that PU is the noise you make when you smell something that stinks. Like an overflowing trash can for instance. Plutonium has 94 protons, which is also known as its atomic number. Most elements have the same number of protons as they do electrons, and plutonium is no exception with 94. Plutonium's atomic mass is 244. An element's atomic mass is the sum of its protons, neutrons, and electrons. But because electrons are so underwhelmingly tiny, they just get factored out of the equation completely, and we just add protons and neutrons. If you're wondering where to find the number of neutrons on the periodic table, they must have ran out of room or something because you're not going to find them there. Thankfully, we can still figure it out. All we have to do is subtract the number of protons from the atomic weight, which leaves us with 150 for plutonium. Another convenient way to classify elements is by how their electrons are arranged. In order to show that, we have a complicated method of showing what order the electrons fill the different orbitals which we call electron configuration. Here is plutonium's. However, the process of how we find this is a topic for a different video. For now, we have a simpler version which just shows the number of electrons in each orbital. The last number is known as the valence electron, which are just the electrons that are found in the outermost orbital. Anyway, that's a lot of arbitrary information on what makes up plutonium, but we still don't fully know where it came from. Plutonium was first made somewhat on accident by a team of scientists at the University of California, Berkeley. Glenn T. Seberg, Edwin McMillan, Joseph W. Kennedy, and Arthur Wall were researching uranium by pummeling it with deutron bombardment when they created neptunium. The neptunium then decayed through a process known as beta emissions and left behind a new element that they decided to name after the next planet in line, Pluto. It was quickly discovered that plutonium could be used for all sorts of cool things, like nuclear weapons. Because of its potential threat, the discovery of plutonium was kept a secret until after World War II. Plutonium is one of the most complex man-made elements, as well as being radioactive, so there aren't a lot of common compounds made with it. However, a few compounds that do have plutonium in them are plutonium oxide, plutonium phosphate, plutonium chloride, and diplutonium trisulfide. Diplutonium trisulfide. Tris trisulfide. 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 Diplutonium trisulfide. Now that we know what plutonium is and how it's made, let's take a look at all the cool things that you can do with it. You could build atomic bombs and other nuclear weapons. Fun fact, the complete detonation of a kilogram of plutonium produces an explosion equivalent to over 10,000 tons of chemical explosives. Plutonium also makes a great energy source for space travel, as well as being a key material in developing nuclear power. Most interestingly, plutonium used to be used as a power source for pacemakers in the 70s. Anyways, that's all we have time for today. But before you start trying to get a hold of some plutonium and make your own homemade nuke in your backyard, Remember that it's definitely illegal to own and almost impossible to get, unless the government says you have a legitimate reason. And hey, that's probably for the best.